Hello and welcome to episode one of season two of the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. My name is Eric Herlock and I will continue to be your host of this podcast. That won't change, but some other things will. So first of all, what do I mean this is season two? Can I do that? Can I just make a new season? Yes, it turns out I can. So everything that came before this, I now consider season one. So all those 170 some odd episodes, that was season one. And stay tuned, we're gonna do a season one recap here in a few minutes just to to bring you up to speed and uh, see where we've been and who we've met and what we covered. Uh, but why why am I doing this now? Well, it seemed like with the, the new year, it, it felt like time to just start fresh. So um, that's what I'm doing. I've pressed the pause button. I've taken some time off. I've spent time in that liminal space, just sort of laterally drifting, brainstorming, writing, thinking, talking to people. And... Yeah, I I believe it's time for a change, and I think 2022 is is going to be a great year. As I've mentioned before, I I used to be a pessimist, but now I'm an optimist. It It was that easy. I've sort of switched. So I think 2022 is going to be a great year, and I want to talk uh, about more than just industrial hemp. Um, Don't be alarmed by that. I'm not giving up my pursuit of covering industrial hemp, because as you know, I am fascinated by this plant, I am fascinated by this industry, and I am fascinated by the people who are making it happen because this is important work that they are doing. And I think the work that I'm doing here uh, is important too, but only insofar as I can communicate what the people out there are doing and you know, sharing ideas and telling stories and uh, helping you learn. I mean, I'm on a, a journey of discovery myself. That's really one of the things that motivates me here is talking to people who know stuff, hearing what they have to say, answering my questions, and then sharing their answers with you so uh, we all learn, right? We all become slightly better educated through this. So this year, uh, we're bumping out the parameters of the show a little bit. I want to cover things that harmonize with the message of hemp, right? Things like, you know, I want to talk about the climate crisis. I want to talk about mitigation of the climate crisis. I want to learn about carbon sequestration and regenerative agriculture. What are these things? How do they work? How can you uh, bring practices uh, like that into your work? So that's where I'm going this year. But I'm also going to throw in some surprises. Uh, I, if I can you know, sort of remove that parameter of industrial hemp and bump it out to just things that I'm curious about, I think we can we can bring you a show that you're really going to enjoy. And that's that's my goal is is to to provide you with something that you like to listen to because you're getting something out of it. Uh, you're getting information, you're getting um, community, and, you know, to a limited extent, you're getting entertained a bit. So um, just laying out a roadmap here of what we're going to do on season two. So let me reiterate, I am not moving away from covering hemp. I'm just expanding the parameters of the show because you know that I I care deeply about this plant and this industry and the people who who are in the hemp space and are making it happen. So just to be clear, so it's still the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. So it's ostensibly about hemp, but I'm going to talk about other things. Uh, I'm going to keep it, you know, mostly in the realm of agriculture, all right, because that's it. We're Lancaster farming, uh, and without farmers, there is no hemp industry. So, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, I've I, I've uh, conveyed to you what I'm doing here, and you know, maybe you don't care. Maybe you're just gonna fast forward and, and listen to the interview. Well, hold on. There's no interview today. All right, this whole show is just me talking. Um, I'm nervous about that because I, I don't talk that much, right? I like I like to hear other people talk. I like to hear other people's stories. So, all right, what are we going to do? All right, well, here, let's, uh, let's change gears a bit. Uh, 
Okay, so before we get too far into things today, uh, I thought we'd take care of a little business. And by that, I mean sponsorship, all right? So this show would not be possible without our sponsors, all right? And this year, I'm happy to say that we've got some of our previous sponsors returning to support our show, and we're also welcoming some new sponsors. And I am I'm just thankful for their support. Um, but just to be clear, I'm really picky about who we, we bring in to sponsor the show. You know, it's like it's not just open to anybody with a checkbook, right? No, um, before we bring on potential sponsors, I have lots of conversations with these people to make sure that their values align with my values and the values of the show and of Lancaster Farming uh, because we are principled people, right? We're not just out here trying to make a buck, right? We're trying to provide you with quality experience. And so we want our sponsors to be quality as well. So with that in mind, I thought I would introduce you to our sponsors that we have signed up for this year so far. I am happy to announce that IND Hemp from Fort Benton, Montana, they are returning as one of our sponsors. I've gotten to know the folks at IND Hemp pretty well over the past year. You know, the Elliott family, they're just, they're good people. Their heart is in the right place. They put their money where their mouth is. They know that this industry, uh, you know, we have to work together to build this industry. You know, they support farmers, they support families, uh, the good folks who I, I believe in. And I'm really just overjoyed that they believe in what I'm doing too. So thank you to IND Hemp. Oh, and also we've got some fun things in store for you in this new season from IND Hemp. So stay tuned for that in future shows. I am also very excited to welcome a brand new sponsor. This is a company from Massachusetts called Impactful Ventures. They are an investment and incubator company focused on supporting startups and other initiatives that play a vital role in reversing the adverse effects of climate change. So we'll hear more about Impactful Ventures in future episodes, but thank you for your support and welcome to our show. New Holland Agriculture. They are also one of our sponsors this year. And uh, you might remember they sponsored um, part of our, our national hemp tour last year. And, you know, we've gotten to know them a bit. Of course, Lancaster Farming Newspaper has had a relationship with New Holland Ag for a long time. So it's great to have them here. And if you're not familiar with New Holland Ag, they are a Lancaster County based company um, with a strong global presence for over 125 years they've been building selling and servicing machinery to help farmers feed the world and they are committed to developing the hemp industry and they are committed to the success of farmers worldwide so thank you to new holland agriculture for supporting us and this year we also welcome back king's agri seeds uh, they've been a sponsor uh, of our show for the past few years here and there and and this year they're coming back and they too are committed to the success of farmers uh, in the hemp industry and beyond king's agriseed and lastly we welcome back americhon cast hemp um, they were also a sponsor of the tour last summer uh, cameron mcintosh he's the owner of americhon and he's a pioneer in the hemp building space and it's an honor to have their support I am honored by and grateful for all of our sponsors, all of the support that they're giving us, IND Hemp, Impactful Ventures, New Holland Ag, King's Agri Seeds, and Amerishon Cast Hemp. Thank you for your support. We could not be doing this show without you. Uh, and if you out there, dear listener, would like to become one of our sponsors, please get in touch. You know, um, increased sponsorship will allow me to cover more topics and to bring you more information and to generally improve the quality of the show. You can email us at podcast at lancasterfarming.com or you can call my buddy Joe Guerreri at 717-721-4450 and we'll start that conversation. Okay, let's get into some nuggets of hemp news for this week, the last week of January 2022. 
So, and it's been a while since I've reported on the hemp news, so I've got a fair amount of stories to catch up on here. So here we go. Hempgrower.com is reporting that Idaho is hosting its first ever hemp producer meeting. The story says a group of hemp companies have partnered with the Idaho Farm Bureau to host the state's first hemp producers meeting at 11 a.m. February 4th. The companies involved in this meeting include Hempitexture, IND Hemp, and 1000 Springs Mill, a grain producer that will be adding hemp into its rotation this year. The topics the meeting will cover include licensing, legality, seed cultivars, harvesting techniques, yields, where to sell material after it's harvested, and more. Here's a story from Hemp Industry Daily that says that the Detroit-based Heartland Industries, a company that engineers hemp fibers as additives for plastic, and Rivago Americas, a plastic recycler, manufacturer, and distributor based in Orlando, Florida, they have uh, announced plans to work together to engineer hemp materials as renewable additives for plastic. Heartland said its engineered hemp additives can reduce the carbon footprint of virgin plastic by up to 44%. The company, which secured a grant last month from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to develop a soil innovation program for hemp farmers, is working to verify the impact of hemp-filled recycled plastics compared with traditional virgin plastics. Here's a story from SeedWorld.com. It says that New West Genetics announces Amplify, a family of hemp varieties with a genetic trait that doubles grain and flower yields. This trait enables the transformation of hemp from a small acre specialty crop to a large scale commercially competitive hybrid crop. The scientists at New West Genetics have bred a breakthrough genetic trait that creates hemp populations with up to 99% female plants rather than the typical 50%. Because female plants produce all the grain and flowers and the best performing fiber, Amplify increases yields for valuable hemp products along the supply chain. This benefits everyone from growers to consumers while still offering the ease of mechanical crop production. Here's some hemp news from the USDA's Agricultural Research Service, the ARS. The story says that ARS and Cornell University have announced the launch of a webinar series on hemp research that aims to broaden the scope of training, education, and connectivity within the hemp community. ARS solves agricultural challenges that affect all Americans, said Zachary Stanzel, USDA ARS geneticist and acting hemp curator. Hemp is rapidly emerging as a critical, multi-use and economically significant crop, so this hemp seminar series is designed to increase the diversity, equity, and inclusivity of ARS's mission while providing hemp-specific education, training, and networking opportunities to historically underserved communities. Lectures will be given by various hemp research experts from academia, research laboratories, production facilities, and private industry. These webinars will occur every other Wednesday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. from January through April. And some of the guest lecturers include Dr. Heather Grab from Cornell and uh, Ethan Russo, um, the, one of the pioneers of the endocannabinoid system. After each webinar, there will be a Q&A session and registration is required. So maybe you've heard the big news from Oregon State that came out a few weeks ago, but it's worth repeating here. So it says that hemp compounds identified by Oregon State University research via a chemical screening technique invented at OSU show the ability to prevent the virus that causes COVID-19 from entering human cells. Finding of the study led by Richard Van Bremen, a researcher with Oregon State's Global Hemp Innovation Center, College of Pharmacy, and Linus Pauling Institute, were published in the Journal of Natural Products. Hemp, known scientifically as cannabis sativa, is a source of fiber, food, and animal feed, and multiple hemp extracts and compounds are added to cosmetics, body lotions, dietary supplements, and food. Van Bremen said. Van Bremen and collaborators, including scientists at Oregon Health and Science University, found that a pair of cannabinoid acids bind to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein, blocking a critical step in the process the virus uses to infect people. All right, we're going to keep an eye on this. Very exciting. 
All right, and here's one. And I, I love it when hemp news appears in unexpected places. Here's a story from sneakernews.com that says Nike is using hemp to weave nearly every part of its new Blazer Mid 77 sneaker. The story says that with their latest Blazer Mid 77, Nike is revealing their crafty side as they use hemp to weave the entirety of the shoe's construction. Marked with hemp along the tongue and the circular design logo on the heel, this upcoming Blazer Mid should hit retailers and Nike.com soon. All right, one last story. This one also comes from Hemp Grower Magazine, where they report that the National Hemp Association is calling on the Biden-Harris administration to invest in hemp. NHA says that hemp can be part of the solution for so many of the challenges facing our nation, especially in the middle of increased pricing on food, animal feed, and related supply chain issues. The legal hemp commodity produces the most nutritional feed and protein available to mankind, says Jeff Whaling, chair of the NHA. But he says that whether the subject be food, feed, pure protein, climate, energy, new cement, or construction alternatives, issues which are this White House's highest priorities, we have not seen any direct support for the research or infrastructure needed for hemp to fulfill its potential to meet these goals. Executive Director, of NHA, Erica Stark says that hemp seed was granted grass status, that's generally recognized as safe, was granted grass status for human consumption years ago by the FDA, and the nation relies on $600 million of annual imported hemp seed to meet that demand. Yet hemp grain for domestic animals and as a feedstock is banned. FDA continues to view hemp grain through the lens of a drug at a time when the administration publicly states it is looking at every way to address these national food and feed challenges, it is time for hemp to have the roadblocks removed and to be given the consideration it deserves. Amen to that. All right, and so concludes our news nuggets portion of today's show. Oh, and as always, if you want to learn more about these stories and actually click on the links and go to the stories themselves, uh, I'll have them all listed on the show page for this episode at LancasterFarming.com. All right, time for a little bit of a recap of season one. Previously on season one of the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. A lot happened. Um, I talked to a lot of people in the hemp space. It was 171 episodes, uh, and I talked to literally hundreds of people in the hemp space or near the hemp space, and I learned an awful lot about the hemp space. We launched the first episode of this podcast back in the summer of 2018. It was at the end of August. The farm bill had not been signed yet. You know, there was all these rumors that the 2018 farm bill was going to legalize hemp as a commodity crop. Um, you know, people were operating under the 2014 farm bill. You know, there were states that had research pilot programs, Pennsylvania had one of those programs um, in the summer of 2017 I saw a few of those test plots and the first the first one was at the Rodale Institute in Berks County Pennsylvania there was four acres of hemp and I had a vision standing next to that that hemp you know like oh this is the future I've been waiting for here we're about to to move into this golden age where we make everything out of plants where we can uh, curb our carbon emissions and we can lock up carbon in the plants and uh, we're going to make everything out of plants and it's going to be great we're going to use it for plastic and paper and textiles and everything it's going to be just here we go game on we are going to save the world through hemp and yeah i know i'm naive i'm a simpleton but still it was it was quite a powerful vision one that i haven't quite shaken yet because I, I still believe that if we can grow hemp on a big enough scale, we, we, can, we can have an effect on the climate, on the atmosphere, on the, the greenhouse gases. Sure, we have to do other things like curb our emissions and all of that stuff. But 
there in the summer of 2017 when I saw that hemp for the first time, it was it was a very powerful vision. So fast forward a year and, you know, the farm bill was was getting close. There was lots of chatter uh, in the, you know, agricultural sectors. And I started looking around and didn't see a whole lot of information for farmers about growing hemp. And here I was working for Lancaster Farming Newspaper, the greatest agricultural newspaper in the world. And um, I took it to my editor and I'm like, hey, I think we should do a podcast about industrial hemp. And he's like, what's what? What are you talking about? So anyway, I was given the green light to sort of work on this this thing on the side. You know, I had my my job as digital editor. So I just started talking to people. You know, I, I talked to uh, the farmer at the Rodale Institute on the very first episode. I talked to Jeff Whaling at uh, the National Hemp Association. Uh, actually, my conversation with Jeff was, was amazing. It was like a two hour conversation and I got like the full download. And uh, suddenly I, I saw like just how much potential was here, you know, from a, a market driven potential. Like this is a big, potentially big industry. You know, back then Jeff was talking about, you know, it's a billion dollar industry. And so I, I just kept interviewing people and assembling those interviews into this podcast. And, uh, you know, it was kind of within my skill set because I, I, I do home recording and I do some music and, uh, you know, I'm a writer, etc. So I just started making this thing and I, I, I met some amazing people through this, right? It turns out that this hemp industry is just full of smart passionate, driven individuals who want to see change in the world. And uh, yeah, it's just been an honor to get to know these people. So who did I talk to? Uh, I talked to lots of people. I talked to a guy who made a sports car out of hemp. Uh, I talked to a guy who makes ukuleles out of hemp. Um, it's just, there's so many just cool people out there who are doing stuff. And uh it's, it's been a really fun journey for me, and I've learned a lot about hemp from this project. I've learned a lot about agriculture and supply chains and processing, and it's been a fantastic journey for me as, a, as an individual, as a journalist, as a podcaster. You know, this has been a lot of fun to do. And like I said, I, I met a lot of great people through this, and I've you know, I've tapped into this network of experts. And in those early days, I would ask, you know, what, what should farmers be thinking about if they're thinking about getting into hemp? And almost without fail, the response was, go slow, start small, learn as much as you can from people who have already done it, uh, find a buyer before you, you get too far into it. You know, but really the, the advice was, start small you know maybe half an acre maybe an acre don't jump in don't bet the farm on it but then the 2018 farm bill signed into law in december 2018 um, here in pennsylvania they opened it up almost immediately to um, to commercial growers and you know there were hundreds of permits granted that year and people went all in you know that that growing season of 2019 was was pretty fantastic. You know, you kept hearing things about the Wild West and the Green Rush. And, you know, there were people uh, thinking that they would make $50,000 per acre from their hemp. But here's the thing. People didn't really know what they were doing. You know, sure, yes, there's people out there who are, you know, they've been in cannabis for years and years. But some people, this was just brand new to them. Farming was brand new to them. And what surprised me early on was was CBD. I was like totally caught off guard by that because, you know, the vision that I received standing next to that field of cannabis at the Rodale Institute uh, had nothing to do with CBD. You know, I'm not even sure if I knew what that was at the time. You know, I thought this was all about, you know, the fiber and what you could make out of the plant, you know, but and that's the beautiful thing about this plant is that it's got something for everybody. So yeah, 20, 2019 was, was, was a ride. You know, it started off talking about 
um, what what you were going to grow, how you were going to space it, what you were going to use for mulch and your watering, and then there was talk of testing. You know, you had to do all of your state testing and your sampling. And then there was the processing, where are you going to get it processed? And then towards the end of the season that year, there was, you know, theft. People were stealing, you know, like hundreds of plants out of fields because, you know, did they think it was marijuana? Whatever. I don't know. But uh, what a crazy time. And so I just kept interviewing people. You know, I talked to farmers and scientists and inventors and artists and doctors, veterinarians. You know, I learned about the endocannabinoid system. Like, what? What is this thing? You know, it's just like, it has been an amazing journey of discovery for me here on the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. You know, I, I can't really explain express enough just how how grateful I am for this opportunity and really you know it's for me it's about the people that I've met the people that are out there you know and uh, I've been trying to give you know people the space to to share their stories and share their knowledge and uh, you know provide a platform for folks in the industry um, who might might not otherwise have a platform or you know we want to reach a wider audience I know a lot of the the media out there um, around cannabis is very, you know, it's marijuana focused uh, and of course now CBD focused. And I I wanted to provide a platform that's, you know, more geared to the farmer. And I've had varying degrees of success there. You know, I always try to bring it back to the farmer, like how, how can a farmer learn from this what does a farmer need to know about this what should a farmer be thinking about how can a far- how can farmers avoid getting the short end of the stick that's a question i used to ask all the time because you know historically farmers get the short end of the stick you know and i don't like it and it, it feels to me like this time as this industry develops and you know we usher in a new paradigm a paradigm not based on greed but maybe it's based on, you know, what is good for people, what is good for the planet, right? And I think there's a lot of folks out there who, who see it that way, too, that this is a, a chance for a, a rebirth, a, a chance to design the system that we want, a system that works for all the constituents. And let's face it, the farmer is the most important constituent in this whole thing, because without people growing the plants there is no industry right and sure we we need um we need government involvement we need private equity in here but we just need passionate people who who want to make a change who want to make a difference and and so that that's what season one was all about talking to people and uh, it was, like I said, it was a crazy ride. And speaking of crazy rides, in the summer of 2021, uh, it, it worked out in such a way that I was able to take an RV around the country to visit hemp farms and processors and just people in the hemp space. Uh, it was quite a, an adventure, a misadventure sometimes. Um, but I've, I documented all of that on the podcast, um, from last summer. So go back and listen to that if you want. So that's the recap of season one, but it's, it's about people. It's about people in the hemp space trying to make a difference. And so where am I at now? You know, what did I get out of season one? Well, I, I've been thinking about this a lot and um, all, of, all of those conversations, all of that research has sort of left me with, you know, some core beliefs. And maybe I had some of these before I started the podcast, but I made a, a list here. You know, it's sort of a, a top 10 list. Um, but I'll, I'll just I'll just read them here. So um, number one, the climate crisis is real and it's a result of human endeavor. Two, we 
humans have a responsibility to act, to change our behavior in efforts to uh, adapt to this changing world and also to try to mitigate the effects of this changing climate. Three, um, farming has to be part of the mitigation process. Large scale carbon sequestration, farming has to be there. Does it necessarily have to be hemp? No, but it necessarily has to be agriculture. Should it be hemp? Well, yeah, show me something better that has more uses and more potential, and then we'll talk. But at this point, yeah, I think hemp is the way to go. But also, we want to avoid monocropping, right? So uh, we want to get into regenerative agriculture practices, and uh, we, we can do this. All right, so where am I at? Number four. Um, farmers need to be recognized for the important role that they play. They must not be vilified or blamed for climate change. You know, you hear a lot of talk about, you know, um, methane from cows or whatever. I mean, yeah, there are definitely agricultural practices that need to change right? You know, like agriculture needs to evolve in some areas. But for the most part, farmers are, are stewards of the land. And uh, we need to recognize how important they are. And we need to not only treat them with respect, but they need to be paid, right? And let's be honest here that the, uh, the carbon in the atmosphere is a result of transportation, energy, manufacturing, right? Yeah, the petrochemical industrial complex is real. And uh, those people made a lot of money. A lot of money in a really short amount of time. Which brings me to my next takeaway here. Number six. We've essentially decimated all of the intricate biological systems of our planet so that a, a small subsection of humans can make money. Let me simplify that for you. Climate change is caused by greed. Number seven, I believe hemp, the cannabis plant, can be harnessed in such a way and at such a scale that it will have meaningful effects on our climate, our economy, our society, our people. Number eight, cannabinoids are great and all, but the true paradigm shifting potential is in the fiber, the herd, and the grain. I love cannabinoids. I think CBD is wonderfully effective medicine. I think THC has done a whole lot for human development. But where I'm coming from, uh, it's, it's fiber, herd, and grain. So anyway, where was I here? Right, I think I said this earlier, but we need to be making most, if not all, of our consumer goods out of plants and other renewable materials, right? We just have to. It's kind of a no-brainer, right? Like, I've said this many times before, but I, I'm kind of a simpleton when it comes to things, and it's like, but why wouldn't we just grow our raw materials, you know? Like, you grow them, and you get a, a new chance every year to, to just grow them. And if we can take care of the soil... And if we can take care of the plants and the water, we can have a really wonderful place here. And don't get me wrong, this planet is a wonderful place. But man, it didn't take us long to really foul things up. And uh, we should all be angry about that. Right? We should all be very angry about how quickly this place was, was just messed up just so people could make money. And, and there's a lot of money floating around, right? It all sort of flowed up. Uh, don't, yeah, anyway, that's a different podcast altogether. Anyway, so uh, is that nine things? Is that 10 things? I'm the worst top 10 list person ever. Dave Letterman would not be happy about this. I can't even count right. Anyway, so yeah, there's, there's a, a lot that I've learned from this, and I, I, uh, I have strong beliefs about the world and how we need to change things. And I am very thankful that part of my job is to talk to the people who are making it happen. So if you're one of those people, yeah, I, I love you. I love you, man. Uh, 
seriously, um, love is sort of the, uh, the overriding thing here. That's what keeps me going in this work. And uh, I love what I do here. And I love talking to people about hemp. And I love to learn. And uh, I'm excited to bring you this new season of the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. And if it, you know, sort of sounds like I don't exactly know where it's going to go, it's because I don't, right? That's one of the exciting things. Like, I like to plan as much as I can, but I also like to leave room for the unexpected, you know, like the serendipity. But they say that luck favors the prepared, and I feel like I am prepared to bring you a whole a whole new season of the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast, new topics, new people, with some of the old people and some of the old topics, but I'm excited for this. I'm thankful for this opportunity. So um, yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the show today. I, uh, I'm glad you stuck around to the end because now I'm going to tell you the secret. Oh wait, there's no secret, sorry. Anyway, my name is Eric Herlock. I am the digital editor at Lancaster Farming Newspaper, the greatest agricultural newspaper in the world. And we'll be back next week, if all goes well. Uh, Definitely within two weeks, with new episodes, with new people. And uh, like we stated in the beginning, a a wider wider lens. We're going to get into some new topics this year. And so thank you so much for going on this journey with me. Remember, you can always get in touch with me. You can send an email directly to podcast at lancasterfarming.com. Or you can call me up and leave me a message. I love getting voicemails from people. Uh, The number is 717-721-4462. All right. And I promise you that future episodes will not just be me talking about stuff. All right. Thanks again. Until next time, I will see you in the newspaper. Industrial Hemp. Season 2, Episode 1 of the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast is copyright 2022 by Lancaster Farming Newspaper part of the Steinman Communications family. Today's show was written and recorded, edited and produced by Eric Herlock. And the music you hear throughout the show is courtesy of Tin Bird Shadow. 